Okay, we're playing some blue-black mid-range now. This is actually Jerry Thompson's article uh, list that he posted in his article after he played this deck in the Invitational. So we're just playing his 75 and seeing how it feels, which I'm pretty excited about. It's got some cool stuff going on. I'm going to play quickly. What is this new playing quickly thing the kids are talking about anyway? <laughs> Not having ca many counter spells in my deck is going to help me F6 a lot, I'll say that much. Sneep. Kind of sneep. Awkward sneep. What? What is going on? Implement of improvement. Okay. Sure. This means they're on like a Herald of Anguish deck, right? Uh, we did that in IRL, Phil. At the, um, at the PT. We both had to play the Magic Online Challenge, which is the thing you do to get, like, your money for attending. To pay for, like, travel costs and stuff. Oh my god, opponent's deck is wild. I feel pretty dead right now, if I'm being 100%. Um... <laughs> Nasif definitely came out on top. In my defense, he was playing his PT deck, and I was playing a a mono red deck I borrowed off a friend because I didn't realize it was really stupid. Um, and it's called the Magic Online Challenge. So I figured, oh, we'll just play our play our decks on Magic Online. And it's like, no. It turns out that what actually happens is you're meant to bring your paper deck with you. So a friend lent me a mono red deck. <laughs> since I left my deck at home, assuming I wouldn't need it for the Magic Online Challenge. Luckily, luckily it made no difference, because, like, the difference in prize, prizes in the Magic Online Challenge, based on how you do, are, like, almost zero, but... What am I doing here? I kind of just want the Champion of Wits. I'm probably getting encountered, whatever I do, so... Yep. Opponent's deck confirmed wild. Oh my god. This is like the deepest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I entered a brawl league. Oh my god. Seriously though, what's going on? This is like so wild. They're gonna have like a counter spell open here. We're gonna feel really sad. Mm hmm. Yep. I, I played a bunch bunch of um, brawl decks, or one, specifically one brawl deck a lot in this format. And they have this awkward thing where whenever you have a brawl in your opening hand, the deck feels really good, and whenever you don't, the deck is like wildly unplayable. Just because, like, all the counter spells and stuff can feel a bit mopey without, like, the looting going on at the same time. Uh, I guess I am casting this Champion of Wits. Mm-hmm. Champion gets to block Pia, which is really nice. 
and discard some of these lands. Um, sure. Now we've got like Gear Hulk into Rebuy Champion as our curve. We do need to find a spell for Gear Hulk, I guess. We don't currently have one in the bin. Okay, we get to pump the Thopter if they want, but that means they're not doing anything else with their mana. Charter Claw seems great in that deck, jeez. So good with Brawl. Oh my god. Ravenous Intruder. I'm just like enjoying the spectacle. Okay. Continuing to draw medium. Um. Yes, I passed the turn here. Yes, Fatal Push would be a pretty nice draw soon. Then we can go push, get Hawk Push. To like clear out the Barole and the Fopter maybe. They almost certainly have Counter Magic in hand by this point though. Again, maybe free if they decide to pump, which they are not doing. Um, you know, I'm actually just going to cast this. Kind of have an interest in getting a five-six in play. And they probably have counter magic in hand, so it's not like saving this is going to accomplish that much. Them countering this now means we aren't spending six mana for it to get countered later. Now we get to flashback champion and cross our fingers. Well, max punished. If we'd saved the push, we'd get to fret and push, get hook push. Uh, obviously, just have to use my mana efficiently here though and bring back the champion. Try and find more answers. <laughs> Are you still at your old job, Amy? Or did you have to leave? Hmm, I guess I just got a scatter. The scatters are pretty medium. At the moment. I'm going to leave back this 2 1 because they can actually sack the implement to make a creature unable to block. So, um, leaving back both creatures seems good. I don't mean getting in two damage is going to matter on our part. Ah, that makes sense, Amy. I hope we find something good. Currently, opponent can deal seven to us, I think. I say, ooh, comboing off over there. Oh, do you think they have um, the the bird bird wizard in their deck? What's the bird wizard called? Teshar? Do you think they have Teshar in their deck? And that's what the white's for? And they probably just have like a bunch of like scrap trawler combo kills in their deck? That could make sense. Fitting in, fitting in an EDH game in a lunch break just sounds so unreal. I don't understand how you have enough time for that. <laughs> Alright, kind of want to look at their hand. As a starting point. I 
probably get encountered. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so now I can kill the fop to play a siphoner. And again, I'm still not going to attack because they can sack things to make us unable to block with creatures. So I need to leave back lots of blockers here. Obviously should have had left up a black mana there, but um, it's not too relevant, I don't think. Yeah, they have the Teshar, which is kind of terrifying. They get back Scrap Trawler. Mm-hmm. That means they can sack things to Pier. And get back other artifacts. This is this is kind of great. This is kind of great. They're drawing cards whilst they do it. I am into the opponent's deck. Jesus. Uh, I really liked the blue black control deck we played earlier. This is the first game we played with the mid range list though. So verdict is still out on this one. Oh, now they draw their whole deck, right? Pretty much. Yeah, now they now they just kill us. Uh, so they kill us because they can sack things to Ravenous Intruder, triggering the Scrap Drawler, which means they can sack an Implement, get back the Mox, cast the Mox, get back the Implement, and they just keep looping it to gain an arbitrary amount of life and then deal an arbitrary amount of damage. Yeah, so we're, we're just actually dead here. That's... That's so wild. Jeez. That's so cool. I think these dead eye trackers seem awesome. I'll say that much. Um, I actually don't hate the idea of duress. They have, like, so much counter magic. What else do we like the idea of? I kind of like the idea of this glimmer. Um, I don't know if Q's good. We can steal like a Teshar or something. That's not terribly exciting though. Right, what cards are bad? I kind of want this stuff to be able to kill them. Take out like some amount of removal. The cast downs seem a lot worse than Fatal Pushes. Because Fatal Push kills Baral. And can also like kind of kill Teshar. Cast down just doesn't kill anything significant, I don't think. <laughs> fair, fair, Phil. See, see you tomorrow, probably. Scatter didn't seem great yet. Yeah, scatter seemed kind of bad. I agree. Take out all the scatters, I think. Just try and like kill the creatures instead. Doom fall felt kind of medium. It's probably still fine. I could see trimming like one. And we need to cut one more card. Maybe maybe a supreme will. Just like trim numbers and find room. I mean this seems fine. Pretty happy to have these trackers in my deck now. I think the trackers are going to be really nice against their deck. Against like Scrap Trawler, Teshar. That sounds nice. Keep. Turn to Siphoner with two energy. And then we have like some Fatal Pushes to clear Barrels out of the way. the brawl. Ooh, a charter course. This is this is not scary at all. Just like spinning their wheels over there whilst we deploy threats. Duress is really nice. Uh, this turn I just want to get my champion of wits in play though I think. 
get another body in play, use my mana really efficiently. I'm almost inclined to like discard two fatal pushes. We'll still have the one push. Oh, awesome. I, I remember that ray, that was really cool. I love that modern deck so much. The like janky red white deck. <laughs> It's so delightful. We have fallen into the sewer. You are not wrong, George. The sewer is our home now. We are one with the sewer. Oh wow. We really are one with the sewer. Nice free color. Nice four color inventors fair deck over there. Yeah, it's, it's on the list of things I want to try once I can stop worrying about standard too. I definitely agree with you on that one. I just want to take like the bio offering. Since the Teshar is probably going to stick. Oh, yes. They get to go like Teshar get something back. So we can take the Mox Amber so the Teshar doesn't trigger next turn. That kind of makes sense. <laughs> I could not honestly answer that, George. Viral Offering's kind of annoying, though. They don't have black mana. Whatever. I don't really know what's happening anymore. Um, kill your thing. Cast my tracker. I think I'm not going to cast the other tracker because I want to have enough energy to draw off the siphoner. I think just having the one tracker in play is going to be pretty good. Maybe I do want to cast the other tracker actually. It, like digs us to land drops, which is kind of nice. It means we don't draw a card, but we get like an extra activation next turn. It's kind of expensive to activate though. If we draw any spell, we're not going to want to activate it. Whatever, I'm just passing the turn. I'm just going to draw off my siphoner. I think, I think that works out pretty nicely for us. There's the Inventor's Fair. Here comes a Teshar, I assume. Do you think opponent broke it? Do you think opponent broke Mox Amber? Wow. They are going to be really, really sad with this turn. Considering they spent a commit on that tracker. When am I meant to activate these? I guess I'm just meant to hold up the activations. So I can respond to things. Probably doesn't really make much difference. I guess if I miss my land drop, I'm probably going to main phase one of the activations. here. Sure. Um, I can just attack with both of these. Uh, eat the commit plus the marks. That's reasonable. We want. We don't want them to untap and cast memory, I guess. Yeah, that sounds good to me, Ray. I agree. Uh, I don't know if I target the marks, though. Kind of want to target like the scrap trawler. Probably doesn't make much difference. 
what I target realistically. But I feel like have them having a scrap trawler in the yard is kind of scary. Alright, so they're targeting Barol. So now we get to go eat Barol plus Mox Amber. to discard one. Are they not attacking with Tasha? It's kind of surprising. They could have drawn two. I guess it doesn't matter too much when they have that dead vial offering in hand, but let's draw two. Sure. Um, if I main phase an activation, I could hit a kill spell for my gear hulk but then I don't have enough mana to gear hulk anyway so yes I might as well just swing with my critters and then pass the turn they get to trade off like a tesha with a siphoner but I think that's fine or well, they can just take four that's also fine just pass the turn we've got activations up so they can't do anything too nonsense here pretty good. Multiple blockers. Ooh. Okay. Um. Interesting. I don't think there's anything too good they can do with this though. Yeah, Tracker's pretty busted here in this game, for sure. Ah, uh, so, end of their turn, I think I'm just going to flash in this Gearhawk to get another lethal threat in play. And I can kill the Fopter. That seems pretty good to me. like get another threat in play that they have to chump block every turn for the rest of the game we still just have two tracker activations up so I really do just don't think there's anything they can do I guess they could have like Jaya's immolating inferno in their deck that would be a way to get out of this but short of something like ridiculous like that or ruinous blast oh now they're just dead right I um, remove a blocker. I guess they were dead anyway. They get to block these three and take two. Yeah, they were just dead on board anyway because of the the trackers can attack here. Sick. On to game three. <laughs> Oh my god, George. That sounds so ridiculous. Almost. The Doom Pool is honestly fine. We've got these duresses that do a similar thing. Um, I'm just wondering, like, removing Teshar feels pretty important to me. I don't know if I want more removal for Teshar. It's kind of hard to kill Tashar with Fatal Push. I think I'm just going to run it like this though. Alright. Yeah, this is Jerry T's 75 from his article. Thought it was a good starting point. Oh wow, this sounds great. Like obviously backup Bloodfast is not the best, but having a tracker, Bloodfast, good mana. 
There's also like a non-zero chance they counter our blood fast, right? Oh, what? If you were to ask me to like make a list of the cards in my opponent's deck, well, it could be in my opponent's deck, Bomat Courier would be like very, very, very far down that list. <laughs> this is surprising. No attacks is also surprising. Wow, their mana base though. Oh, uh, we have Duress in our deck, so I'm just going to draw now. Yeah, I think so, Chantel. I think that's a thing you can do. You can just, like, cut Negate from this deck. And then that works out fine. Like, I don't think you need Negate in this deck, because you have Duress and Jace's defeat. Uh, the one thing you probably do have to do is you have to split the chases defeats in the gates. I think, like, in that situation, like, you'd have one deck wanting one and the other deck wanting the other. But I think it works out fine. Um... don't really know that this is correct, but whatever. Like, at some point, they might start attacking with this courier, and then it gets annoying. I don't really care if, like, taking a card from their hand when they're missing land drops. Now we get to slam our Planeswalker. And win this game relatively easily. Yeah, I, I think mono green's not very good. I agree, Chantal. Um, we're kind of choosing between blue black, some sort of blue black deck, or green white ourselves. We don't really know which direction to go, though. It's kind of a tough, tough format to work out, right? Hmm, <laughs> duress is good. So. Let's take a look at what's going on over there before we make any decisions. Yeah, those, those are certainly some cards. Uh, none of these really matter is half the problem. I'm just going to take this, because it's like kind of mana efficient when they get the brawl down. But, I don't think anything in their hand remotely matters. We have a Gear Hulk in our yard now, for this Liliana. You take the Reunion? Oh, because it like sorts their hand out a bit. That's fair, that might be correct actually. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense, taking the reunion because it sorts their hand out. Uh, I kind of almost want to hold this back so I can start growing it. I'm also just like draw a card off the blood fast anyway. Yeah, stopping them from cycling the stuff they don't like would have been good. I think I agree with you both that, um,. Reunion was probably the take there. I guess they're scared of a counter spell, so they're leading on Charter Course. I guess Charter Course also gives them more information before the reunion as well. So, get Hulk's a nice one. Um, 
I'm likely holding up for my Gear Hulk this turn. So I guess I just attack for five. I'd love to hold up the tracker activation. We know they have a Teshar in hand. If missing out on one damage is like never gonna matter, right? It's kind of annoying. Like I want to reanimate the Gear Hulk, but it feels like a waste to do so. I just like put up my five six in play. I think realistically I'm never losing this game ever. I'm probably just worrying too much for no good reason. It's probably going to be very, very hard to actually lose this game. Right, we have seven mana up. So we can Gearhawk or we can activate Tracker. Just being far away, yeah, for sure. Alright, here comes the Cathartic, discarding Scatter. Um, that's fine. <laughs> Sick. Huh? One and O. Oh. Against, uh, against the greatest deck in the format. Four color Teshar. Beating four color Teshar, clearly very important to your RPTQ deck choices. Like, make sure you do not lose to four color Teshar. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. I expected to see like a Ruinous Blast at some point. It's actually kind of weird that they're playing um, Vile Offerings, but we didn't see Ruinous Blasts instead. Ruinous Blast would have been, like, kind of medium that game, I guess, but in the second game it would have been pretty great. Alright, match two. I've got, like, an hour 40, so I need to head off. So... <laughs> can you beat the red deck? No. Can you beat the control deck? Hopefully. Are you well positioned against the third sewer deck? Clearly. That's basically how the format works. That sounds dreamy. That sound is quite dreamy. Two into three into kind of four. Well, we could die. We could also just die. That's a thing that could happen. Yeah, that's what I've heard, George. Only one result actually matters. It's kind of kind of absurd. I'm just discarding these two. Yes, I can discard these two. Keep the hub for a future siphoner. Okay, Kari's pretty scary. Right, I guess I'm casting another 2-1. Just to, like, try and block. I could put the Scarab God in the bin. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Ray. I think I agree. I think I agree that that seems pretty good. Keep discarding these stupid siphoners. And next turn we reanimate Scarab God. Ooh, Hazarat. They can't attack with her yet, though. 
She's going to be pretty scary. Bit of me like almost doesn't want to block the lava runner so that I can champ Hazard out with my champion. It's so sad. That's kind of a sad consideration. Hmm. Probably just gonna block. Then they have to send Hazaret at Lily next turn. That's probably fine. With not taking like so much damage immediately. Yeah, this cast down is kind of breaking my heart. <laughs> so many legends. The field is like lands and legendary permanents at the moment. Just five legendary permanents. Liliana down. Um, I'm gonna block their 2-1 and hope they don't have another deal free, I guess. They have another deal free. It's pretty rough, but they do not. Okay. Um, I am gonna reanimate this Champion of Wits. Once this Bloodfast flips, we probably can't ever die. This Bloodfast is actually seeming kind of great, just as like a land that gains infinite life. Contempt is dreamy. Oh my god, these cards are so good. <laughs> Um, bottom, guess we top this. Yeah, Scarab God is a delight, for sure. Okay, so I'm going to play my hub. Um, what am I doing here? Am I attacking for five? Or am I holding back Scarab God to block? I kind of feel like I have to hold this back to block, otherwise... I guess I don't die to a Crasher. Hmm. Attack them down to 13. This game is tough. This game is tough. Because, like, this has to block the Hazaret, so we're taking three and going to six. But then we can... You like holding and ending the game next turn? Yeah, I guess once the Hazaret's contempted, like, we're pretty, like, locked to win the game, right? And this way the Scarab God can block the monkey. Oh, sure, I'll just pass the turn. This is probably fine. Yeah, that makes sense, Ray. I think I agree. It's like a little bit tough because we kind of want to get to exactly like five life so we can flip the blood fast, but doing that whilst Hazaret's in play is a bit dangerous because they can go lightning strike plus discard. So now we're on seven. So we would, have, we would have been dropping to like four with the other line, I guess. Okay, so I get to go 
block this, block this. And I go to six. Um, I think I'm going to actually draw a card here. So that I can flip my blood fast. So they can't kill me from four. Once this is flipped, I can just gain five life whenever I want. Seems pretty unreasonable to me. Also gives me an extra mana, so that next turn I can go Contempt plus Activate Scarab God if I want. Yeah, so... You get to go flip blood fast. Why are we getting a? Oh, this is a zombie. What am I missing? Where is my? Oh, because it's from Liliana. That's hilarious. That is so adorable. My zombie scarab god. Let's get rid of this hazard. Yeah, from Liliana, for sure. I missed that, but it's kind of great. Right, I think I'm just leaving back scarab god to block with her. So probably can't win the pos the game from this. I probably can't lose the game from this position as long as I play like really conservatively. From now on, I was probably meant to keep the island on top so I can like double activate and hold up temple from now on. Click buttons at random. That is also a valid option that will probably lead to us winning the game. <laughs> Clicking buttons at random is the strap. Okay, they're discarding their mountain. Sure. Okay, past the turn. <laughs> we need to make sure we don't die to a lightning strike here, I guess. So I'm probably going to block and sack the Scarab God. Since I'm going to get this back anyway. And this means I don't die to a lightning strike. I guess if I was going to do this, I should like cycle this first in case I hear a fatal push in the beginning of combat. Now they only hit me to 8 though, and then I untap with Gearhawk Contempt up. And another Contempt, of course, of course. Must be. Um. Hmm. So I could just never this. And then make a zombie. Oh, whoa, what's this? 15 new items. Oh, because I'm silver, jeez, the value. I forgot, I forgot about that, like, little upside of being silver. I'm just going to cast my Scarab God. Not that much that can really go wrong. If they hit a Hazorat, I have to, like, chump, but... Can confirm, George, is, is... Decidedly nice. I just take five here, because then I can untap contempt this and have my my unbeatable land up. So I'm just gonna draw for the turn. 
Huh. It's kind of gross. Um, sure. Exile your Hazarets. Maybe I was meant to like reanimate Champion of Wits there. I'm like so unlikely to, I'm so likely to hit an untapped land. Must admit, I am basically clicking buttons at random now. <laughs> it's kind of great. Kind of great. I can swing for five. If they have another Hazorat, I reanimate my Champion of Wits to block. They have like a, yeah, a glory bringer. I can cast it down. Huh. Oh, that's fair, Trenomaris. I guess there's, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. That sounds a bit better than what I did. It's now really awkward too, because I like can't activate Scarab God. Because there's, Oh no, they played out their land, so I can activate Scarab God. That's great. Thank you, opponent. I appreciate it. Oh, if I get back Kari, they're dead, right? 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Yeah, 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Like, exactsies. I guess they were dead anyway, because we could have got back like two other things for the upkeep trigger. Lava Runner has haste. <laughs> that is an, an excellent point, Freed. Alright, I'm going to look at Jerry's article, or his sideboard guide. So against Mono Red, he brings in extractions, cast down, push, and coups. Those all seem great. And he takes out Supreme Wills and Siphoners. He actually keeps in the Bloodfasts, which I found really weird when I heard about it, but it's for exactly like the reason we see in those games where like once you flip the Bloodfast, like you, you basically don't draw cards off the Bloodfast in the matchup, but once you flip the Bloodfast, it's um the life gains like an amazing defensive tool. I could see this hand being bad where it doesn't have like early removal and we're on the draw, but I think the scatters are reasonable. We can't just like mull every hand that doesn't have a fatal push, right? As long as we have some sort of early play. Now we can ha now we have scatter into push plus scatter. Yeah, I'm just gonna counter whatever just because I want to be using my mana here. Obviously, Soul Scar is not that scary, but like they probably just drew this for the turn. Otherwise, they'd have cast it the previous turn. So, um, all right, we just kill the courier. Unless we do it in raw step, right? Kill the courier. No, we do it now. If they want to discard four to draw two, that's fine. Then we get to hold up Scatter again. Oh, the Freebooters have been good for you. The Freebooter seems kind of reasonable. Just really wanted to try out Jerry's list as a starting point, though. Wizard's Lightning. Sure. Go to 13. Virtual 12. You get to have Scatter up this turn, though. And then, like, kill the Lava Runner.
Okay. Pretty soon we're going to be able to curve Lily into Gearhawk, which is nice for us. Kind of clinging on. Drawing that Fatal Push was important, but definitely clinging on since then. Let's just kill this thing. Now the 2-2 gets to block the Lava Runner pretty well. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a third Scarab God. Scarab God is kind of unrealistic, for sure. I agree with you about that, Freed. Okay. We have a 2 2. We've got us to 6. Kind of scary. Good one. Um, just make some two twos, I guess. The two twos get to block Hazaret nicely, and we have an essence extraction up, which is going to be excellent. And kill like a crusher and gain free life. Huh. Am I killing this? I think I'm just going to kill this. Just use my mana. Not being able to kill a crash is unfortunate, but we're making zombies. Our well, life total is going to be a bit padded, so... Yeah, opponent's just, like, completely done. Alright, 2 and 0. 2 and 0. With blue-black mid-range. I'm going to head to the bathroom a minute. And then we're going to hop into our third match. See if we can, like, keep running off some wins. Apparently the bathroom is in use, so I will head there at some point soon. Um, bought you twice, GG. Yeah, I know they can do that, George, but I feel like I'm meant to play around Crasher. I guess I've already seen two Crashers, and they only have so many in their deck, but I feel like passing the turn and just playing around Crasher is reasonable. For sure, I would have died to two bolts there, though. We'll go first. I guess we keep this hand. Not siphoner with hub. Basically, dark confidant. Hopefully we're against, like, blue-white control or some nonsense. Get to draw lots of cards. Okay. Decent chance we're about to see a fatal push here. Don't break my heart, opponent. No. So rude. Oh, is this mono-black? This is mono-black. Jeez. Opponent all about that mono black life. I assume this deck must have a horrifically bad mono black matchup. Which is a slightly embarrassing thing to say about any deck. Possible one is meant to like hold up contempt for Khan here, but I'm just gonna like do this. Ooh, that lift seems pretty great. 
the ATO list. I do like Charter Course with um, Freebooter. It's kind of weird, like you have to have both of them together. Like I think I think you um, need Freebooter for Charter Course to be good, but Charter Course is really nice. I think Charter Course would be quite bad in this list, just because you don't have as many creatures. Like, often you're having to block with your creatures. God, I really don't want to use a Contempt in the Aetherborn, but... Yes, I probably should. Like, they definitely have Planeswalkers in their list, which makes it a bit awkward, but... I don't want to just take, like, a million damage, whilst we're, like, stumbling on mana a bit. Yeah, Liliana Scarab God combo is kind of nice, for sure. Ooh, Seekers Squire. It's been a minute. Oh, look at this value. Look at this value, Seekers Squire. Drew them a 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to be greedy and not contempt that. Yep. Now we're probably going to have to contempt some random dirtle. It's kind of fine though. We've got this Gearhulk coming. That would be some solid value. Contempt in our yard for our gear hawk. I'm gonna hold this to cycle it in a little while. Now we'll like flashing gear hawk. Attempt to ambush a zombie. It probably just gets contempted, but that's fine. It just like buys us a lot, a lot of time whilst we um, dig for some champions. Pass my Gearhawk. Pass my Contempt. They're going to cast their Contempt. Torment of Hellfire. Oh my god. I'm not sure if I could live with losing to that card. Um... That's the turn, I guess. Probably going to be Hulst downing the zombie, just because there aren't that many better targets. I think I'm going to wait a moment, because I might want to contempt the Planeswalker instead, this turn. Once they hit their fifth land for a Liliana. Eep. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I guess most of the things we impulse into we can't cast at the moment anyway, so we might as well just wait and see if there's another Liliana for us to counter. Hey Pedro, it's nice to be back. I was away for quite a while, but it's definitely very nice to be back. Just going to kill one of these. Like, my life total's reasonably high, but we could be treading water for a little while. So, don't really want to take four there. Okay, we can kill the zombie. We need them to just have removal in hand. Like, at this point in the game, it's definitely possible that our opponent just has, like, three removal spells in hand. That's pretty normal for Mono Black. <laughs> Quite.
quite serendipitous. No! Alright, cons. Gonna be a tricky one. They probably have a million removal spells anyway, so I'm gonna give them the Doomfall. It's kind of awkward, because, like, Scarab God's kind of an okay draw, but I think we're probably just super dead here. This matchup seems pretty tough, though. They have lots of two-for-ones and grindy Blame Planeswalkers. Imagine Scarab God's probably, like, part of the key to the matchup. Jeez. I might concede in a moment. I think. Yeah, they can reanimate a Liliana. Okay, okay. I, I think I think I can't actually win this game from here. Realistically. Yep. Yeah. Alright, sideboarding. So we want this Glimmer, 100%. We want this Negate. We want need some of these Duresses. Q doesn't seem like it does anything. Tracker seems like medium minus. I really want this stuff. This stuff all seems great. Um, Essence Scatters are good against Gonti specifically. I'm definitely willing to cut some... And Fatal Pushes are pretty bad. As are Cast Downs. Kinda like this. I think this seems good to me. Maybe I want like one or two more Fatal Pushes than I have currently. Honestly, if I see Walking Ballista, I might trim on some Siphoners. I think this is fine. Uh, we tried out Blue Black Control in our first league. We tried out Jeremy Dizani's list. We went 3 and 2 of it. It felt like unexciting but fine. The, the Khans felt really good in that list. I kind of want to play with that list a bit more. I just feel like Midrange list has felt really solid so far. Again, it's like kind of medium. Like, lots of the non-red decks in this format are, though. And, um, we've run our first two matches with it, which is respectable, so... Can't really complain. Alright. I am gonna go first. Yes, this is fine. You've got, like, a champion or three. They have a lot of answers to Champion. They have um, Never Return, like an Exile, the back half of Champion. But it's still like a decent card. Uh, I don't really understand it either, Peaches, if I'm being completely honest. So you're probably not missing anything. <laughs> All right, use my champion. Like I think I think most of the green decks just look pretty bad in this format, if I'm honest. Third deck syndrome. Yeah, that's probably it. What's the second card I'm discarding? Maybe just another land. I kind of want to take my land drops with a champion, though. I could just call a Contempt. Or a Supreme Will, one of those two. I can just discard a Contempt. Maybe that's wrong in, like, this grindy matchup. But with the champion in play, I kind of want to hit my land drops. So, I think I'm just going to hold up Supreme Will this turn. I can counter a Khan if they play one. I guess I kind of want to cast this too, though. 
I'll just cast this. And then next turn I can start to hold up counter magic. Now that I've got a threat in play. Something not unreasonable to like wait till turn five and play this with counter backup. But this seems fine. Ooh, hostile desert. They might be on Willy Adel's list. I think he had like two or three hostile deserts. We get to untap. So lucky. Jeez. Rar. Go, Siphoner, go. Are they going to contempt at her? I might actually counter this if they contempt this. Okay, I don't really understand what's happening anymore. If I'm being completely honest. <laughs> hey there, Stunlock. Could just like impulse here. They go to cast that. So this means we get to counter and then have another counter. That's why I didn't, didn't want to impulse. The fact they did it in beginning of combat is really awkward for them. Because they can't stop us gaining the energy. And killing and kill the creature. But it works out really well for us. Because now we just have the other counter up. For a planeswalker or whatever. Or even something like a contempt. We can counter it and then draw a card. And then have Gearhawk counter up if we hit a land drop. Just works out really nicely. Let's see if we can hit our land drop here. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm going to counter that. Um, I can cycle this land for my turn. I guess I'm just going to do that now, because I could draw a duress. I have like three duresses in my deck at the moment. Next turn I will have my gear hulk up, which is going to be really big. I'm still just drawing cards off the siphoner if they don't kill it. Yeah, so they kill the siphoner. Oh my god. That's absurd. Yeah, I'm RP queuing this weekend, Felix, which is why I'm trying out a bunch of weird standard decks this week. We um we need to figure out like what our non-red decks are for our team. So I'm playing a bunch of non-red decks as it happens. Ooh, Liliana is good. I get to contempt her though. So that works out nicely. I think I'm just going to draw cards here. Then I can like gear hulk contempt or double contempt depending. I can leave back this to block a zombie actually. Um, I can go gear hulk contempt to the lily. Threat in play. Try and just like trade with the Etherborn to keep my life total high for this Bloodfast. I 
Right, I think the bathroom's now free, so I'm actually going to take a minute's break from this game. Um, I'll be back in one moment, and then we'll finish this game off. Hey, thank you for being patient whilst I disappeared for a moment. Ooh, Khan, scary. We've got these contempts though. So it's probably just like gonna cantrip, kinda. Uh, I am teaming for the RPTQ with Stephen Murray and Nicholas Eck, who are both pretty great, so I'm excited. Very excited to be teaming with them. Doomfall's nice. Okay. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. So I can go Contempt, Doomfall, Activate. If I want. I kind of like to see what's going on in their hand. So let's do that. Okay. I can take this Elder Straborn. And then I can Contempt the other Khan. Kind of awkward that the Khan gets to grab a Liliana, I guess, but we'll, we'll survive, I think. I think we'll survive. Okay. Like, I'm getting pretty ahead at the moment. Especially this glimmer, like even once our blood fast runs out, we can dig for a scarab god. They can cast this other Khan, they can minus to grab Lily. So they have a Liliana in their hand, and he miss yeah, just a Liliana. They can activate their hostile desert here, but it doesn't really achieve much. Okay, so I guess I... This might be the Glimmer turn. So I really want to find an answer to the Liliana in their hand. So, like, the Scrying's pretty helpful here. As opposed to just activating Bloodfast. Ooh, commit. Commit to memory does it. Um, kind of does it. It means they get to untap with their Khan. We only have... 6 mana. What we can do is go siphon a hold up commit though. And then we can contempt next turn. They just get to draw the one card off of Khan, which is probably going to be a land. Yeah, I like this. I like this plan. So let's get our siphoner down. Hmm. 
Now we pass with commit up for their Liliana. Okay. Um, I guess we give them the desert. They get to cycle the desert, which is pretty sad for us, but it means they get just get to like redraw off it. I think this is fine. Right, they have a Deadlands. They can kill our Siphoner if they want. Or they can just cast Lily. So now we get to like draw cards off our Siphoner, which is great. So we're just going to commit this Lily, untap, contempt the Khan. Draw some cards off Siphoner. Everything seems very solid for us right now. Ooh, okay. Um, Champion's not the worst, it's another blocker. So let's go Champion. Use the ability. Discard a pair of lands. We can Contempt Khan. I guess we can draw a card off Bloodfast first and see what we find, maybe. Okay, we can Contempt Khan. Cast the Siphoner. And our board's looking pretty great. If they ever start attacking with those Aetherborns, we get to, like, trade off our champions, which means we get to draw more cards. Uh, we currently know zero cards in their hand, but we know they have a Liliana on top of their deck, which they just cycled into. So they get to cast Lily here, and start making zombies, which is scary. It's not like the scariest thing in the world, but it's not nothing either. Oh, it isn't Harluk, is it? I forgot to update it because I'm still getting used to using Stream Decker. Give me one moment and I will update it. Yeah, you're completely correct. I um, just completely missed to update it. There, it should be up to date now. Harluk. I would like to draw a card, and another card. Never Return is gorgeous. Um, so, we can cast some spells. That was my trip there. The trip was awesome, Harluk. I had a really good time. Um, feel very like positive about the whole experience. Um, didn't, didn't have the best results in the world, but I think I, like, pretty much broke even on the trip. And, uh, like, I, I met, like, loads of amazing people, made some, like, connections, which is good. Or, like, events and magic writing and stuff. Um, yeah, just, like, all around extremely positive experience. I've definitely, like, returned, like, much more motivated than when I left as well, which is nice. Kind of trying to figure out what to do here. Like, I might just Doomfall to exile, like, a random creature. It's not exciting, but... I feel like I'm so far ahead at the moment, you know? Just, like, not taking any risks seems fine. Should probably activate the blood fast there instead of like use my never return. It's fine though. Now we can pass the turn. At some point I might have to like just start attacking your champions. They get to like block them cleanly, but then we get to draw cards. Since we're like about to run out of card draw pretty soon. Obviously we have this memory in our yard, but with us being so far ahead. Casting memory feels like a bit risky. 
Yeah, Amy, it was really exciting. Um, obviously we all saw each other at points throughout the weekend, but also, like, we went, we, like, hung out, a, like, a bunch. Um, we went out for, like, a meal in the evening on Friday, which was really cool. Card. I think I'm gonna transform the blood fast. They have a field of ruin. Maybe I'm not meant to. I guess I can kill their field of ruin, right? I can kill their field of ruin. So I only get to draw one more card off the blood fast anyway. I guess I can just do that now. Now I can transform it, and then I can kill their Field of Ruin. Now if they ever attack, we jump with a champion. Oh, we can sack a champion and reanimate it? That's absurd. Jeez, this is great. Okay. We have to kill them at some point. We're, like, very close to decking here, but... I guess we have a memory in our yard, so we're not actually going to deck. And we'll find a Scarab God pretty soon, which should make this easy. Let's discard these stupid duresses. Yeah, this is great. We should be able to end this quickly with Scarab God. Hey, John. Yeah, I'm hoping to stream that at some point. Oh, they drew another Field of Ruin? Oh, that's kind of rough. This is still fine, though. we still got Scarab God, and they don't have a removal spell in hand. So probably, like, just huge, massive favorites from here, regardless. Um, I'm not going to be playing any Esper today or tomorrow, but it's definitely something I'd like to play at some point soon. I think it's pretty unlikely I play Esper at the RPTQ, because it takes out so many cards from, like, the unified pool. So as a result, I'm probably not going to be playing it on stream, because I mainly want to play decks on stream that I'm likely to... that, like, I want to try out for the RPTQ. So... But yeah, the Esper deck's really cool. Um, I was really, really happy with it for the PT. They drew a never. Okay, so I can go Gearhawk counter that. With my um, commit. Yeah, Guillaume Matignon's lists are really good as well, for sure. Get like the Seeker Square. I think the list I played needs like a bit of work. I didn't have that much time to work on it by the point I'd settled on it, but I was definitely happy with like how it performed and everything. Alright, let's reanimate the Seeker Sway, get in the extra damage. Um, that's fine, it just like clears a blocker out of the way, right? Bottom. I kind of want to like draw a negate to protect my Scarab God. I probably can't lose if I like do that. I guess I've got this Champion of Wits as well, so I can like draw all of this stuff. I can go, like, Champion of Wits. Ooh, I can also Field of Ruin them. I have to do that after drawing my cards, though. I should have done it by now. And, like, my upkeep before the trigger resolved, but this is fine. So I can draw two, discard this stuff, I guess. Um, then I can Field of Ruin their Hostile Desert. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely the case. I think um, 
like any changes I make to the list would involve making it better against the red decks. I definitely agree with you on that one, John. Seems decent. Right, I have to speed up. We need time for um, a game free. Obviously, that is like 100% dead this game. Okay. Oh, you're right, Chris. We should have been attacking with Gearhawks from like the moment we got the Scarab God down. For sure. Pretty light. I like how we had this set up. Like some kill spells for Aetherborn wouldn't have been the worst, but I think it's the Planeswalkers you lose to. Everything else you can kind of like find ways to deal with. <laughs> oh my god alright hopefully hopefully we can win this match and then be free of with the stack be pretty dreamy this hand is great duress into siphoner the dream Ooh, Liliana seems excellent in this matchup. Just at, like helping grind out the games. Huh. Like, obviously protecting our Siphoner from this never return would be great. But I think we just have to take the Bloodfast. I think the Bloodfast is um, pretty devastating if it resolves in this in this matchup. Like we saw how much work it did for us that game. I think we would struggle to beat one from our opponent. I'm just gonna cast the Siphoner here. They need to find a black source to kill it in their turn. If they don't kill it, we get to draw a card in our next upkeep. Okay, they found the black source. So we're gonna see a never here. Yep. That's fine. It means our Liliana is less likely to die in a little while. Uh, let's just cast our Champion of Wits. Try and smooth out this drawer a bit. Like, obviously holding up um, the gate would also be reasonable there, but I'm definitely discarding this Doomfall. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what the other card we discard is. It's definitely not the Island or the Liliana. I almost want to just discard the Negate. It's like Negate or Glimmer. Kind of like being able to like cast Glimmer as my next turn though, ensure I hit my fifth land drop for Liliana. Sure, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna like this. Now if they cast a Khan or something scary, we get to never it. Otherwise we get to cast a Glimmer. I'm just happily gonna trade off my champion here. I guess they get to re oh they no they get to return my champion now. This, that was maybe a misstep on my part. I don't think it's too important, but because we're gonna re be resolving this glimmer anyway. Um, 
And they would have just cast like a 2-3 that turn, which works out pretty similarly. But for sure, losing the champion flashback's a bit sad. Yeah, I guess part of the thing is I feel like we're tapping out a lot for like Liliana. We were tapping out that turn as well. So having an answer like never that we can use after we've tapped out is kind of nice. Whereas like negate doesn't get to do that so much. Interesting. Oh, they just want more black mana, right? For their Aetherborns? That makes sense. Just get another black source here. Um, it's a bit fine. I think I'm going to keep the Cypher. I don't know how I feel about the champion. I'm going to bottom the champion. I kind of want to find like some removal or something, I think. Okay, I found one anyway. Get our Liliana in play. We could minus on the Siphoner, but I kind of like just like spewing out two twos to trade off with their zombies. They don't have a Contempt or in a fine spot here. They have a Duress. That means they probably don't have a Contempt though. I guess they can animate the Hostile Desert and attack with everything. But Lily still survives then and we get to trade off with the Zombie. Opponents are not in a great spot by the looks of things. Doomfall to get Hulk. That's okay with me. Straight off of their zombie. Alright, that's pretty unbeatable. Um, just gonna keep plussing. Found a gear Hulk, which is disgusting. I guess we could have championed first and then like maybe looted away a gear Hulk. I kind of want to siphon a plus, plus blood fast this turn anyway, though. I don't know if I'm drawing off the blood fast and trying to hit a land for my siphoner, or whether I'm just casting the siphoner. I think I'm just casting the siphoner. Just like want to guarantee it gets in play. Yeah, red clock's a concern. You're not wrong, George. These games go really long. Next time we like get back a gear hawk though. Kill the Aetherborn. I guess we can't unless we double block. I really want to draw off my my Siphoner. That's fine. zombie like activate my blood fast kind of want to find a duress before I cast the scarab god or a negate so that I can protect it from a uh, contempt ideally Ok, 
Okay, they're leaving back their Aetherborns to block with. Makes sense. Even stops my Siphoner attacking. Doom 4. Okay, that can clear the way for my Scarab God. That's nice. Um, I could also just exile an Aetherborn, though. I'm going to start with Champion. If I find a Duress, then I can use the Doomfall on their hand, on their board instead of their hand, potentially. Awesome. Whoa, what? Um, I guess we're grinding through Liliana's. Running through Liliana's is challenging in two and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. That's a really good draw. And we get to kill Lily. It's like an amazing draw. Blocking achieves nothing. Yeah, I guess they go ahead and do it anyway. We got the Scarab got down. Probably just like incredibly big favourites from here, even with two minutes. Comes Liliana too, but she's just gonna die to our board. Oh, we can even go Gearhawk Contempt her, huh? If we want. Gearhawk Contempt the Aetherborn kill Lily. Oh my gosh. Sorry that I'm not being super talkative. Kinda trying to finish this in time. Uh yeah, Odie. If you look on the like bit where up where I'm streaming, uh you should see a little like pop out thing saying stream decker, which will show the deck list. Three and is pretty sick. This deck has been Going decently. We need to play against some red decks though and see how that matchup is. I guess we we played against mono red, right? We two owed mono red. So yes, we're actually yes, we're actually just doing great. <laughs> Apparently. Actually just doing great. There's no stream decker button for you? Huh. It will be on like the right side of the window, but um I'm afraid there is no way to see the deck list if you don't have that. Hey Kaylee. Hope everything went well. Actually this might work. This might okay, so exclamation mark decklist links you to Stream Decker. Where it's being where it is listed. Um yeah, this is just Jerry T's list. I haven't actually changed anything about it because this is literally my first time ever playing it. Um So there's nothing like no, I haven't really made any changes to it yet. It's just his his 75 that he posted on SCG, I think, earlier. This, no, it was like last week after the Envy. It's felt pretty great, though, so far. I um, wouldn't mind a third Scarab God is the only real, real thing. But other than that, it's felt really, really good. Okay, match number four. We're currently 3-0. Let's try and go for that 4-0. 
hand is excellent. We've got some removal creature. Our blood fast. Which is gonna be pretty great in a bunch of matchups. Just gonna get this tap plan down. We've got champion to filter away extra lands anyway. You liked having gifted Aetherborn also. Yeah, that seems like a fine tool against like the red decks for sure. Ooh, we drew the Fatal Push. So, I really want to get this Blood Fast down, but I think I think it's just responsible just to get rid of this Elf. Next time we can champion. Try and find some stuff. Ooh. They're on green-white. Huh. Is it weird that I almost want to Doomfall this turn rather than Champion? It's not like I'm blocking with this anytime soon. I kind of want to see what's going on in their hand, you know? Like, the info could really inform my decisions the next few turns. Blossoming Defense, Ballista, Ballista. Uh, the PT went pretty reasonably Celtix. Um, not as, like, as well as it could have. I ended up going 9-7. And... Um, I got, like, an extra pro point for that, which is good. I ended up hitting silver shortly afterwards, which is just great. Like, it, being silver essentially qualifies me for two PTs, I think. Which is really exciting. Uh, I'm going to get on my blood fast and start drawing, I think. And then I can, like, champion that. Like, the champion's really not very impressive against the ballista anyway. So, I think just drawing some cards sounds pretty good to me. Uh, so I ended up going 9-7. I went 7-3 with Esper Control, which was my standard deck. I was actually 7-1 at one point in the tournament with it. I ended up running pretty badly in the last couple rounds to drop to 7-3. So the deck performed like really, really solidly in like a very competitive field, which I was happy with. Um, the thing that really like hurt me was my limited performance was quite bad. I think I underperformed for like my decks. Like I think my, my the decks I drafted were perfectly reasonable but not great and I ended up running a bit badly with them. But I, I was happy overall. I think I was happy overall. I think I'm going to cast this Champion of Wits try and find a removal spell. I can, like, discard this other champion then. I, like, really want to hit my sick land drop for the Gearhawk next turn. I think is the really important thing. So, I think this makes sense. Um, I also want access to double black, just in case. I, like, get incredibly lucky and draw both remaining fatal pushes. I guess I could draw a tap land and now I feel really stupid, huh? That's fair. I can discard the Gearhawk for my Lily. Now if I miss my land drop, I can just reanimate the Gearhawk. Seems really strong. Now I have Scatter up as well. What are, what are your my thoughts on Jerry's choice to main deck three Fatal Pushes instead of four main deck? I think it's reasonable. Um, there's, there have been times where I've considered doing similar in decks, like... There are just a bunch of matchups where, like, Fatal Push is a bit mopey or unexciting. And obviously against Control, it's like an actual dead card. And, like, Jerry has a bunch of other cheap interaction and a bunch of, like, good blockers, like the Champion of Wits. So it's not like he just, like, has nothing filling that role. So I think it's reasonable to... To cut a fatal push. I'm actually going to counter this. 
This isn't like a terrifying creature, but honestly, with us on 13 and them having a blister and a blossoming defense, like, basically anything is a bit scary from this spot. Uh, I don't know why there's no chupacabras, I'm just copying Jerry's list. And Jerry didn't have chupacabras. I could see chupacabras being very good, like they've always looked good when I've played against this deck. But I'm just copying his 75 for my first league. Uh, so we gear hawk, fatal push, hell. It's just going to end up getting the blossomy defense out of hand, but... It like really cuts down their aggression, which is nice. Like they have to push through this gear hawk now to start hurting us. Okay. And they can kill Liliana with their ballista if they want, but that's gonna use up their whole turn. Which I'm fine with, because they have to like tap four mana to pump up the ballista. I guess they could just attack Lily with both, but then they lose one of their creatures. I guess they're losing a creature anyway if they're pumping ballista. I I can't Doomfall there because Doomfall is a sorcery. Cody. Yeah, opponent's very done. Understandable, understandable. I'm going to check Jerry's sideboard guide. Okay, he does not have a sideboard guide for this matchup, so we're going to have to play it by ear. Um, so, I assume cast down is like dreamy. Um, I'm pretty off the idea of like all the siphoners against the ballista deck. Confiscation crew is awkward against blossoming defense, but I guess we just like hope to push through the blossoming defenses in other ways. I feel like the coup is going to have lots of good targets. It also just steals um, bestiary, which is really nice. I think stealing bestiary is like the most exciting thing, honestly, since that card's very scary. We probably want the the fourth push as well. We just cut these siphoners, since they just die to ballista really badly. I think this looks okay. Yeah, for sure Harpo. Shalai is a really nice one to steal. I don't know if I want anything else. I think I'm pretty happy with this setup. I like almost wouldn't mind cutting a champion against the Ballista, but honestly champion's fine, even against that card. There's nothing else here like I'm excited to bring in, so. Doomfall's probably not great. That's fair. It's it's kind of nice that um Doomfall can deal with like a creature around a blossoming defense, but I mean, I guess that doesn't come up too often. Since they go pretty wide. I'm just going to bottom this. I can all take my lands for the coup. Like, I could cast this turn free. But, like, on the draw, they get to cast Bestiary before my third turn anyway. So. Yeah, for sure, Kaylee. I don't think... I, yeah, I think part of it is just, like, um... Yeah, there's not a lot of other exciting stuff to bring in. We could bring in Essence Extractions, but they seem a bit clumsy to me. And this matchup. We can just kill this with our cast down. It's pretty nice. I guess we just get that out of the way now. So they can't um, defense. Like most of their scary creatures are like at three or more mana, so we get to like untap and never them anyway. Okay, that's that's adorable. It's 
snake cat. I was actually, I was played Asper, playing Asper Control online, and this card actually destroyed me. It was like, kind of embarrassing how good this was against Esper. Ooh, I can just leave commit up now. Or I can contempt this. 119. I feel like I can just leave commit up. For like... Something big. I can steal like anything that's not a planeswalker. I'm a bit worried about blossoming defense. This is probably fine though. Yeah, for sure, Odie. It's also good against like Champion of Wits as well and Scarab God. Oh my God, Chris! Thank you so much. Amused. <laughs> yeah, eight months is like so many months. Thank you so much for the support. Everyone spread some hearts in chat to celebrate Chris's return. Like, really, really appreciate the support. Ooh, I get to steal a Shalai. I'm so excited. I'm just gonna kill this um, server pad and then, and then take my Shalai. Alright, and then we have a blood fast as well. We just have like actual everything. I've missed casting this card. That's okay, Amy. You can you can um, spread some hearts next week to make up for it. <laughs> Are you casting out any of that shall I? That's decent. Let's uh, just cast our blood fast. Hold up, commit, and then like we can activate blood fast a bunch. End of that turn. Ooh, gross. They can kill their cast out to get a Shalai back. That's really good. I guess I'm just going to do this and buy some time. Get to untap and draw a bunch of cards. Okay. I got Field of Ruin to shuffle it away, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to start with just drawing a card though. And I think I'm gonna field to ruin them before I draw before I draw another card. Cause the Brontodon's pretty annoying, I think. I guess they're not drawing it next turn. I could just like draw two instead. Kinda wants to like try and hit my land drop here. Yep. There we go. Now we can pass with um Fatal Push up or cast down. Seven is fine. End of their turn, we get to kill the Oasis to shuffle away the Brontodon. It's kind of awkward. We don't get to get our second blue source here if we want to be a mana efficient. But with like the Bloodfast, we're pretty likely to draw into a blue source, so I think that's fine. That's great. Second blue source is really good. Um, I don't want a memory because I feel like we're pretty far ahead. So I'm just going to keep activating this. Now I can pass with a bunch of spells up. Angel of Sanctions. Okay. That's something for us to return. Which is pretty nice. So we can draw a card. Cast down the angel. Then we can untap and return the angel. Is 
guess I just do it this way. And hold up contempt is fine. This is pretty great, for sure. For sure, Kaylee. This deck is crushing. Jeez. Pretty easy for her. Hopefully. Hopefully this next match goes our way. Thoughts on what would happen if Liliana of the Veil made it into standard. Um, plus my Liliana, discard my scrap peep. Sounds kind of great, actually. <laughs> oh my god. Are there any other, like, premium stuff, to, things to discard? Discarding Champion of Wits isn't really a combo, because, like, your pluses on later turns are going to eat into your land drops. Oh, plus my Liliana, discard my Hooded Hydra. That's like adorable. <laughs> okay, I would really like the 5 0. Just 5 0, lock in this deck list for Sunday, get to play Vintage Cube instead of Standard. This is probably going to be my last match of the night, um, since I have some stuff planned for afterwards, but hopefully it goes our way. We'll see what Liliana and M M19 looks like. Ready? That's, I would be surprised if it was Liliana of the Veil, although they did consider reprinting her in like the last M set, and ended up not going through with it for like various reasons. Um, the Dead Eye Tracker was pretty decent earlier. I feel like there's a bunch of like nonsense decks the Dead Eyes are decent against. I don't know. I'd ha I'd have to sit down and think before making any changes. Honestly, this list has felt really, really solid to me so far, though. Other than the fact that I kind of like the idea of a third Scarab God. Um. I'm. I think I think Green Tron and KCI are probably the two best decks. I'm gonna keep this and hope we're against creatures. <laughs> Irrigated farmland go. This is justice. This is what justice looks like. Jeez. Almost like want to scoop now. I'm so sad. <laughs> uh, it's up on SCG. It's about a week old in SCG Premium. Oh, they're on Gift. We're also probably still dead. <laughs> I think it's fair to say we're also probably still dead. Wow. Scarab God's a good one. I'm just going to play this land out. Like, I feel like whether we choose to cycle it or keep hold of it is kind of 50 50 either way. I'm kind of fine with keeping hold of it. I'm just like ensuring we have the mana for Scarab God no matter what. Um, so I've got bad news about that disallow, Kaylee. <laughs> it might not be in the deck. <laughs> kind of, kind of bad news. We have Supreme Wells, so we can draw those. <laughs> Champion of Wits, sure. Doomfall then. 
I'd be okay with a Doomfall as well. Doomfall sounds great. Or a commit. I don't know if it currently appears to be spinning their wheels a lot. Let's admit, this matchup seems like it could be pretty tough, even ignoring, like, how this game is going and how we've drawn and stuff. Like, um... Blue-Black does not interact with God Pharaoh's Gift as a card very well. And, like, the deck seems pretty reliant on spot removal for a lot of its matchups, which seems awkward. Against, like, the Angel of Invention deck and the Champion of Witzes. I'm just going to counter this and slam my Scarab Guard and hope they have actual nothing. I think that is my best chance. This is where I cross my fingers. Yeah, exactly, Kaylee. I agree with that completely. And like once the gift is on in play, you just lose. At least you have Scarab God, which is like very good against gift, but even then it's tough. Awesome, we get to kill the angel to get our Scarab God back. This is gonna work out nicely, I think. This is gonna work out pretty nicely. I'm just going to pass the turn. If they go for a gift, we get to kill the angel, reanimate the angel, eat the gift. Angel of invention. Uh huh. That one's pretty good, I guess. kind of awkward. Um, obviously I'd like, like to save the ability to do this so that I can deal with a God Pharaoh's gift if they cast one. But I also feel like I just need to start doing stuff, you know? kind of feel like I need to start just doing stuff. So, since I do not have forever, So what am I reanimating? Could reanimate a champion of wits and try and find a counter spell. And then next turn I can Angel of Sanctions. Yeah, I agree. I think I think I think that makes sense, Freed. Um so Yeah, I'm gonna block with the Scarab Guard. End of their turn I'm gonna reanimate the champion to try and find a counter. And then next turn, once I've got a counter, we can try and do something. Obviously, we have to take the Angel of Sanctions pretty soon. Except if we draw a removal. If we draw a removal, we can just, like, kill the Angel of Sanctions, right? Ooh, Supreme World's great. So, we can discard a Fatal Push. And I kind of want all my mana, but this is a tap land, which I don't think is very good for me. Since I'm, I'm going to go 7 mana into 8 mana, ideally, here. Um, so. I can reanimate Angel of Sanctions, eat this. And then I have Supreme Will up for a gift. I 
get to attack them for 9. Oh, the angel dies to push. What? No, it has... It's 5 mana, isn't it? Why would it die to push? You mean the flashback on the angel? That's fair. I... I always forget the difference between Scarab God and Eternal Eyes. Yep, you're, you're correct. That's like one of the things I keep messing up a bunch. These are really good cards, jeez. Um, I kind of want... I definitely want the island. I think I want the cast down. Yeah, let's do this. We can play this. Yeah, I find it really confusing that they don't just have Gift, Scarab God, and Eternal Eyes all work the same way. It always, like, catches me off. Refurbish coming in. The fact that we won this game is kind of absurd. <laughs> don't really understand that. Like, our opponent just spun their wheels a lot, and then we cast Scarab God. It's kind of absurd. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Um, so, Ku isn't actually good against Gift. It's really hard to get enough energy for it. And if you steal the Gift, then they just Angel the Gift back. So I, I don't actually want this card. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the trackers for sure. The trackers seem amazing. Um, some mixture of... I don't think we want all of this, but some mixture of this seems good. Um, I'm just going to do something a sec. Sorry. There we go. Just like... That's good. Um, so, we definitely want some mixture of Doris in the gates, and maybe this cast down, and like some mixture of this stuff potentially. Well, the trackers are definite. Uh, we can cut like a Fatal Push. I think the Siphoners might actually be pretty bad. It's really hard to attack with them in this matchup, I think. So our opponent makes a bunch of like 1-2s and Champion of Wits and Servos. I think these might actually be pretty bad here. And like the Scatter isn't great either. Bring in... Bring in like a mixture of this stuff. Um... Maybe like this cast down? I think this looks okay. This definitely isn't the perfect sideboarding, but I think it's in like the right direction. I could see cutting another scatter, like being able to scatter um, the angel that makes servos is pretty nice though. I think this is fine. We're just going to be leaning really heavily on Scarab God to win games. Just like we did that game. Alright, we'll keep this hand, we'll keep this land. kill like a uh, minister if they have one and then have a counter spell up. Ooh, they just have nothing. Okay, well, that's decent. They probably have a champion of wits here, I have to assume. Yeah. 
they get to loot away a gift if they have one. Oh wow, gift and angel. It's pretty good. Pretty threatening. Kinda need to hope they don't have like multiple refurbishers in hand, huh? We can kill the minister, which is nice. I guess they're missing a land drop here. Or they just have a tap land, apparently. Oh jeez, this isn't beatable. Um, obviously it sucks losing our counter spell when they have a God Pharaoh's gift in their graveyard, but I don't think we can beat this search for his counter if it resolves, so I think I just have to do that. And we just need to like cross our fingers, we get to untap with the tracker in play. If we do, we're in like a very good position, but there's a chance they just refurbish here and we lose the game. Like if, if I'd known I was drawing the tracker, I probably don't counter the search, but I think in any other situation I want to counter that search, so kind of just had to do it obviously did not work out for us. Hmm. Right. So... I get to kill the angel with my cast down. I guess I should do it now because otherwise the negate is like incredibly brutal. They have the rivulet, so even after I eat creatures out of their yard, they get to like re-roll to try and hit one, which is fairly scary. Alright, they just got an Angel of Sanctions. So the trigger goes on the stack, and then we eat the Angel and the Minister. The land is great, it means we go Contempt plus Activate next turn. The land is a really, really good hit there. Like, I think being able to contempt this thing here is pretty important. So we can play our Aoife Hub. Just pass the turn, I guess. Depending how desperate things get, we could even, like, block and then activate if they don't put a creature in the yard. And just, like, cross our fingers on that 60%er. I don't know how I feel about that idea. I'm not sure things are like desperate enough for that yet. Let's see if this resolves. If it doesn't, we might have to do that. If this doesn't resolve, we probably have to block and activate and just cross our fingers. 
Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to go for it. Obviously, we're like 40% to lose the tracker and lose the game. But I think we need to like start stopping these servos. So, I'm just going to cross my fingers. That's really bad for us, obviously. I think we still just have to go for it, though. But obviously, it's going to be very, very hard to win now. Um... Kind of wants, like, Gearhawk Contempt. They could have Jace's defeat, I guess. Should be rough, but... Alright, contempt this champion. We up to six. They didn't have a Jace's defeat, which is great for us. Uh, they do get to activate the river lap, so we kind of have to cross our fingers. Uh, if we'd been on the play, I would like totally agree with you, I think, Kaylee. Um, as it was, I think we were on the draw this game, so we didn't actually have Supreme Will up on that turn. But... Like, on the play, I, I definitely agree that in that position, countering the champion seems really good. Wow, that binding is amazing. Now they get to put us to one. Okay. Um, Jerry T posted a sideboard guide for this archetype. It's only covered, like, three matchups, though. But, like, for those matchups, it seemed pretty solid. Uh, other than that, I can't, don't really have any suggestions, though. That's, like, the only one I've seen. Hey, <laughs> we need so much to go right here. Such as them not discarding a creature. Okay, okay, okay. Game three. It's kind of awkward if we hit off the tracker and make it into a 2-2. I think we probably win that game. It's, it's definitely closer than I guess they get to binding our tracker. So maybe we still end up losing it in the end. It's definitely a lot closer then. Um, hmm. No, I almost want. It's on the play, like, scattering a champion's pretty nice. Yes, we just run it like this. I was considering, like, bringing in the third duress. Since they have counter magic as well as, like, all the usual nonsense. Duress doesn't seem terrible by any means. On the, on the play, I could just cut, like, a Fatal Push and bring in, like, the third duress. I think we want some amount of, like, this spot removal, but trimming a push seems fine. Okay, so I would like to play first, and I'm definitely keeping the sand. Uh, I'm just going to fire off the duress turn one, I think, because then I can hold up scatter for like the foreseeable. It's like a bit awkward. I'd like to like be able to take a refurbish, but yeah, like 
I feel like we want to cast this at some point soon because they have search for a scanter in their deck that we've seen. That's like a pretty good motivator for just firing it off, making sure a search for a scanter can't stick. I'm pretty interested in taking this charter course. Okay, um, there's no real two drops we want to scatter, so I guess I'm just playing the pools out. In case I draw a free mana spell next turn. Now we can scatter the champion to stop them looting away the gift. Works out really nicely for us. Um, am I just main phasing a glimmer? They have this Jace's defeat in hand. Sure, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jam this glimmer now so they can't counter it. I think that sounds pretty decent to me. JD West by, thank you so much for that new subscri subscription. I really, really appreciate the support. Everyone spread some hearts in chat to celebrate our new subscriber. Ooh, Dead Eye Tracker. I love Dead Eye Tracker here. So good. Thank you so much, JD. I really appreciate it. Okay, they have their fourth land, so they Things are going kind of okay for them over there, but we get to resolve this tracker now. And hold commit up for like whatever their next play is. Like if they have a binding or something, we can commit it away. They're just going to hold up Jace's defeat because they're really scared of Scarab God. Which makes sense. Oh wow. Second tracker. Is amazing. Just like, we get two of them in play. Now we're not worried about binding anymore. Um, I think I'm still probably going to hold up commit. I could just champion plus activate tracker this turn. It's like kind of interesting. Like the track is gonna help us find lands anyway. I'm actually kinda of interested in just activating I might just activate this main phase. And then cast champion. I guess I can just cast champion now. That's kinda of tough. I'm just gonna pass the turn. And keep holding this up. We get to eat their yard this turn. It lets them counter the champion. Yeah. I'm not really too sad if they use Jace's defeat on champion. Since, um... I don't think the champion resolving is too important to me. And it means they can't counter the commit. Okay, so, uh, I can cast the champion, also hopefully the hoover isn't too loud, I think my housemate's only doing it for a few minutes, and that's like clean a farmland, we get to loot, Get rid of this land and this other champion, I guess. Um, <laughs> the Hoover is relaxing. Oh my god, the relaxation is so real. Right, I think I am just going to attack with one tracker. Hold the other back to act, threaten activation, and get my blood fast down. I think that sounds really good to me. So I still have a 
activation up to protect myself. If they stick a gift, I can commit it. And like, gift isn't even that scary with us having tracker on board anyway. At some point they have to cast this angel. Like so. We can contempt it, so I'm not too fussed about that. Once we hit our land drops, we can even, like, flashback champion whilst still having tracker up. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. Um, Alright, I'm just going to duress them here. Then we'll probably contempt. Jace's defeat, GPG, which we both knew about, and a Minister of Inquiries. Um, hmm. I guess I just take the GPG. Play this hub. I could honestly just flashback champion this turn. And I'm just playing GPG. Doesn't do anything next turn because we have commit in hand. You'd need to draw, like, Champion of Wits specifically. And I kind of want to get my 4-4 in play. Start threatening them. I guess this is still just reasonable, though. I can still just do this. Like, just contempt this. I'll leave up this, and once I hit a land, I can do this stuff anyway. I guess this is fine. You like the Champion here? Yeah. It's kind of interesting, like, I feel like if we get to untap with our 4-4 four, four, um, in play, we'd be like a very, pretty big favourite to win. I also feel like we're a pretty big favourite anyway. The risk of like them hitting champions kind of high. Maybe you're right though, I could see just like, just making the 4-4 four, four being correct there. Kind of an interesting one. <laughs> no worries, Tones. I wonder how many answers to Tracker they actually have. It's like, they're kind of doing work. Alright, now we can champion, and if we hit a land drop, we get to have Tracker up. I guess this is a bit risky, but it's probably fine. Wow. Punished. Um We still have we still have the commit in hand, so we're fine, but obvi obviously a bit punished. I think I'm just discarding these two. Yeah, that makes sense, Katie. I think I agree with you. I think I agree that we should have just made the 4-4 last turn. Um, do we even want the Gear Hulk? I think I just want the Gate as something cheap to do. Like, we've got our 4-4 in play. We're just going to discard the Gear Hulk. I think that's fine. I just want to be able to, like, commit with Negate backup pretty easily against, like, a bunch of counter magic just in case they get a gift in play. I guess maybe we discard the cast down instead, because we can gear hook contempt that way. Yeah, we meant to discard the cast down. I am quite exhausted at the moment, but this is fine. Right, we need them not to run too good here. They did not run very good there. They milled, refurbished, charter course planes. And, um... Okay... Uh, they found a champion of wits. Gives them a shot. Still fine though. We still have like two trackers in play. And a million cards in hand. Can kill their 4-4. Four, four, start attacking with our 4-4. Four, four.
Cast down looking a tiny bit better than Gearhawk here, admittedly. Since it clears the 4 4 out of the way so efficiently and lets us like start attacking immediately. Now we have like negate plus double activation up to protect against any nonsense. I'm assuming this game is pretty over. My hand would have to be like so ridiculous to get out of this. The fairy's reasonable. Um I'm gonna try and commit that, they're gonna Jace's defeat, then I get to negate that. Yeah, I've not seen Teferi in their sideboard before. Kind of a sweet addition. Against decks that are like slowing themselves down against you and... Or like bringing in a bunch of disenchants I guess, or grave hate. Um... Guess we just attack with both of these. Then hold up our activations. I'm gonna hold my land because I have Champion of Wits in the deck. Oh, that's fair. Make them like redraw a counter spell. You might be right, Junior Hayden. There's like a decent chance you're right about that. I think. Right, once they've activated the Minister here, I might kill it. Depends what they mill. Oh wow, so we have to get rid of the champion now, and the angel of sanctions, so we're just going to do that. Before they can untap with them in play. And I'm going to go ahead and kill this, they can't mill multiple creatures. And then there are exactly two creatures in the yard, which means we can exile them both if they play a gift. These trackers have been sick. Like, they've actually been kind of ridiculous. Age of Invention's strong. Like, dealing with our board. Release the part of the board that's attacking. Right, so we eat the creatures. Kind of funny, we've activated like Tracker like 15 times this league and have only, only drawn lands of it. I'm not convinced that Explore does anything but draw you lands. I can just commit, I can uh, just contempt this so I can start attacking. It's kind of an aggressive line, but I think we're far enough ahead that we can just take the aggressive line. I kind of just want to get my opponent dead whilst I'm so far ahead. End the game quickly. Glimmer. I just want to get their blocker out of the way, I think. So I can, like, 
keep trying to kill them with my cr creatures. Keep pushing damage with this 4-4. Four four. They're gonna mill themselves. Yep. They hit an Angel of Sanctions, so we have to activate this now. We can take the Angel and a GPG. I think this is going to be the 5-0. Yeah, track is unreal. This card has been like... So unreasonable. It definitely looks better when you only ever draw lands off it as well. That's for sure. We need the GPG and some other nonsense. Um, guess that's fine. Nothing really matters. Apparently this tracker is indeed tireless. Apparently so. Okay. So if we attack with everything, they block these two and take five, so we're just gonna attack with the, the non-tracking creatures. And they go to free. Luckily we have these trackers up so the minister's not too scary. I think this is the 5-0. I think yeah, opponent just conceded. Hype. Trophy hype. Jerry Thompson hype, jeez. This, this list is gas. This list is so good. Let's open a treasure chest. Vexing Sphinx. Alright. That doesn't seem great. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank, thanks, Hayden. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I'm going to be on to, again tomorrow for everyone who enjoyed the stream. I'll be streaming again tomorrow, streaming more standard in preparation for the RPTQ. Trying to find trying to find the decks that my team's gonna play. Um So yeah, I'll be on a similar time tomorrow. Uh, I have like a haircut in like early afternoon. So I won't be on until like the sort of time I was on today. But hopefully get a couple leagues in again tomorrow. Play some more mid range, blue black mid range and maybe try another deck. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you especially to all our new subs and all our resubs. And hopefully I'll see some of y'all tomorrow. Good night.